tribe, how you guys doing? This is VH1 Family Reunion Season 1, Episode 2. Let me say this. Um, I, I, I like the show. And I'm going to tell you why I like the show. Because this is what we need. We really need this in this moment. We need a show. And I understand why they're doing it. I know they're doing the show because of COVID and they had to come up with some stuff. I get that. But I'm here for the concept of what it is. You have a bunch of people that are coming together who are dealing with whatever issues that they're dealing with. Whether And what I'm also liking about this show is that I don't feel like it's produced clearly. But it is not as produced. Some things are just what they are. You know what I'm saying? And we saw that a couple of times in this episode that real life meets reality TV. And y'all know I always tell y'all about real life meeting reality TV. So we start off, this is it's field day. Remember, everybody has to do a different event. Well, not everybody, but a few of the people are doing different events. So we have field day. So we got Fizz and April. Now, they claim ain't nothing go down the night before when they left the party together. Fizz says he took her home, and then they went back to their place. But let's be clear. Fizz and April are not, when it comes to telling the truth, we know that we know they good for a lie. So, just because they said it, it don't make it true. But whatever, I digress. So then... They get to talking a little bit about what happened with them. It's been about a year since they have talked to each other. Since it's been like eight months since they've talked to each other. And April was like, well, you know, I called you. You know, you I would called you last. You're the one that ain't called me. So, you know, what's up with that? And he said, you know, I really had to figure out and come up with a good working relationship with Moniz. Like, we really, really had to get that right, you know. And... I just had to figure some stuff out for myself, you know. And so, you know, I, okay. I mean, all right. Glad y'all figured that out. Then we had Trick, Joy, and Trick's son. Now, at first, I was like, I'm not getting ready to sit here and do another however many episodes this is going to last of the Joy and Trick train. I'm not here for it. I don't care no more. I mean, I don't think I cared at first, but I damn sure don't care now about whether Trick and Trina ever, I mean, Trick and Joy ever spend any time together ever again in a relationship. I don't care. But it ended up being more about Joy's relationship with Trick's son. And I can appreciate that. We see later on Joy talking to um, Sierra. And we know that it happened on the show where Sierra lost her stepson. And she said, you know, I feel like we just had so many unsaid words between us. I feel like so much that we should have said that we didn't say. And for that, you know, I, I wish I had that time back. And so Joy took that to heart. And she pulled the, the young man aside um, later on in the episode. And she says, listen... I just need you to know, whatever happens between me and your dad, I need you to understand that I'm going to always love you. I'm going to always be here for you. I always thought of you as my son. And just because me and Trick ain't going to be together anymore, I don't want you to ever feel like I'm not here for you. And he's like, no, I know you are. Like, I, I know what's going on between you and my dad. Like, it is what it is, but I know that you got my back. I know that you love me and you got my back. So, I definitely... Um, it was a moment, you know, and I felt like it was, you know, it was a moment. And whether it was produced or not, that's something that I think all of us can relate to um, when families break apart for whatever reason and you got attached to certain members of that family. Just figuring out a way to maintain the relationships, the healthy ones, right? Then we see Jock talking to Scrappy and Scrappy talking to him about the divorce, about, about him and Bam. And he said, you know... I feel like when you get married to somebody, the love is supposed to be more. It's supposed to get bigger. And I just feel like I'm not appreciated. It's how he said. Basically, what he said was he don't feel appreciated. He said, you know, I treat Bambi like a queen. And I feel like if I'm treating her like a queen, then I should be treated like a king. And here's what I can respect about Jock. Jock said, listen, y'all been married for three years. She's been married twice. I mean, she's been pregnant twice, meaning... For more than half of y'all's marriage, she's been pregnant. That's a lot. And she's just getting to the point where she's starting to feel like herself again. 
get her body back again, like be and figure out what her role is as wife and mother. And so it's not really fair to put that on her, to put y'all situation, you know, it's not fair to really put that on her like that, you know. Um, and so I can appreciate that Jock had that conversation with him because sometimes, you know, people don't tell us what we need to hear. People tell us what we want to hear, you know. So I feel like that was a conversation. So a good conversation. So then we have um, Mama D talking to um, Mendici's mom. And she was just saying how, you know, I feel like Yandy doesn't really want me to be in my son's life. Like, I feel like she want her to have him all to herself. And when, when my son was locked up, I feel like I wasn't included. She didn't include me in what was going on with him in his life. Um, you know, she didn't invite me to things. And I just felt like I didn't have that part of the family anymore. Um, then Mama D was saying, well, you know, that's important. You know, I got some things I'm brewing myself. And we see that she got this secret person coming that nobody knows about. The secret person's coming. The secret person's coming. <laughs> so we get to field day. We're playing. We're laughing. We're joking. We have four different teams. We got the yellow team, the green team, purple team, red team. Everybody got t-shirts and it's real cute. It's a real nice thing. He got different games set up, and everything is everything. Well, about halfway through field day, Erica Dixon shows up. The only person I know Erica coming is Mama D. Mama D says, listen, I feel like all of us need to heal the family, meaning Scrappy and Erica have definitely got to figure out a way to create a better co-parenting relationship for Imani. Now, Imani is almost 16 years old. At this when they film this, either she is 16 or almost 16. Child, y'all ain't got to figure out how to co-parent no more. No, you don't. Co-parenting is when kids, in my mind, when kids can no longer communicate with their parents. Child, Imani got a cell phone. She can call her daddy whenever she want to call her daddy. She can go see her daddy whenever she want to go see her daddy. And that is their relationship. You, you ain't never got to talk to that man again. Ever. So, this was clearly just for the purposes of the show. We get it for the drama of it all. But here's the thing. I really don't think Scrappy knew she was coming. I, I don't think he was in on it. Because his reaction, baby, I, I, I don't think he was in on it. And I can respect the hell out of Bam, because Bam went over to her and said, can we talk? And she says, listen, I'm an adult. I'm a grown-ass woman. You a grown-ass woman. At this point in, in things, whatever I said in the past that was disrespectful to you, that wasn't cool, whatever I said to you in the past, I apologize. For my part, I apologize. And Erica was like, you know what? I appreciate that. Thank you. And, and and same here. Like, you know, we can let whatever happened in the past be in the past. And let bygones be bygones. And, and I appreciate that. Scrappy act like her ass won't there. Walking around like, what? Like, he don't even see her. Like, he don't know she there. <sighs> I can't tell no. Listen. You don't, you can't piss somebody off and then tell them how mad to get. So I can't tell Scrappy how mad to be. I can't tell him to get over it. I can't tell him to move on. I, I I can't tell him that. I think he got legitimate reason to be mad. Him and Erica did some dirty stuff to each other. To each other. And if he ain't ready to be over it, like I said, that girl's 16 years old. He don't need to talk to Erica Dixon a day in his life. They went to court. Whatever child support has been, has been resolved or however it was resolved, it was through the court. He ain't got to talk to that woman for nothing. About nothing, for no reason, for nothing. So I'm with Scrappy to a certain extent. Like, ain't nobody, don't nobody need to talk to him. Now, later on, okay, we had a little conversation between Trick and Mendeecees. And I feel like that conversation was supposed to talk about the criminal justice system and get deep into how the system is stacked against you and it ain't made for black men and blah, blah, blah. But y'all know, know Trick can't, he can't focus on nothing. And about halfway through the conversation, he started talking about April and how cute she was and how he felt like he needed to pull up on her. Even Mendeecees was like, are we done talking about... The, we talk, Are we done talking about jail? Okay. <laughs> it was like, 
It was literally like a mid conversation. Trick went. <laughs> I don't know. Um. So Erica and Mama D had a conversation because Mama D actually brought Erica there, and we know that in the past Erica and Mama D ain't had the best relationship either. Um, and they were just talking about wanting to just make the co-parenting relationship better for Imani and just moving on as a family as some sort of a blended family. Um, while this is going on, Bam and Scrappy are having a conversation, and Bam is telling Scrappy, "Listen, this is the conversation that I had with." Um, Erica, you know, I said, let's move on, let bygones be bygones, let, let, let it be what it's gonna be, it is what it is, type of thing, and, you know, Scrappy was like, <laughs> alright, but, I don't have nothing to say to her, and, you know, Bam tried to get her to have a conversation, and she was like, yeah, I ain't, yeah, I ain't. Now, they end up having, like, a little hookah bar thing that night, you know, with everybody had, like, little drinks and stuff. Now, the kids were kind of hanging out. Jock's son, Trick's son, and Carly's um, daughter. And they were sort of talking about growing up with their parents and what they felt like they, they got, didn't get, what they missed, what they didn't miss. You know, all that good stuff. Now, Jock's son, he trying to pull up on, you know, Carly's daughter, but... She ain't. She said he's too young for her. And she ain't really thinking about him like that. But she does end up walking off to the side with Ray J. Now, this was during the time when Ray J and Princess weren't together. So, it is what it is. And I doubt very seriously that Ray J is dumb enough to do something on camera. I'm sure it was for the cameras and for a conversation. But, child, ain't nobody. Child. Carly was like, uh-uh, come over here with me. Mm-mm. Nope. Stay the hell away from Ray J ass. No, you won't. Mm -mm, you better come on over here. No, no. Um, Erica tries to have a conversation with Scrappy. And Scrappy is not here for it at all. Scrappy's like, we don't need to talk about nothing, for nothing, about nothing. There's nothing me and you need to discuss for any reason, any place, any time. I'm damn sure not doing it here. I'm damn sure not doing it on camera. That is not what we're doing, ma'am. I'm done. Um... And then even in his confessional, he was like, I'm not doing this. Like, y'all want me to talk about Erica more than I'm talking about my own wife. I'm not about to sit here and do that. Like, I, I'm done. I don't have nothing to talk to her about. I don't have nothing to talk to y'all about. Like, Scrappy really is not here for it. And that's why I said, I don't think, I really don't think Scrappy was in on it. Because let's be clear, he ain't that good of an actor. Okay? So, yeah. That was pretty much the episode. Like I said, I like the episode. I like what the concept of what they're doing. So that was pretty much it. That's it. That's all I got. Talk to y'all later. Peace.